Are we saying the PDP didn't have any of those skirmishes activated by their own camp? So they were just the ones, uh, the underdogs, and not fomenting any trouble. What, what we found out, him. what we found out, is that APC was not prepared for the election. We were prepared. They didn't want the elections to hold, so that Buhari will be sworn in, will take over, then the elections they will have an advantage. That's why he went to Wiki's house at midnight. But we, we spoke, but we spoke on food. Because what could have been the reaction? The youths of the community will react. But we said, no, this election must hold. Our target was to ensure that the elections held. They were not prepared for elections. So they were the aggressors. Well, they, they have written a petition to INEC. Uh, I think it was dated 12th. And they are asking for cancellation of the elections for conduct of fresh runs. Maybe you may have heard that. They say that... Uh, the commission, commission's officials colluded with security operatives to compromise the integrity of the electoral process in virtually all the 23 local government areas of the state. First, INEC does not have the power to cancel the election. It's been, uh, it's been announced. The first certificate has been issued. INEC cannot. So the only way is to go to tribunal. We will meet them there. We are happy that. Please, let's use this opportunity to call on Amechi and his uh, APC. Let us enjoy peace in River State. Follow the rule of law. Go to tribunal. Is allowed. We we'll meet them there. It's in the interest of our democracy. It will develop. So let them go to tribunal. Rather than being violent, killing or fighting or wanting to destroy, let them go to tribunal. Does that mean it's that the, 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 all the allegations that they have uh, against the resident electoral commissioner in the state, none of them hold water? They protested against her after the first election. The, the national chairman sent three federal commissioners of INEC to supervise the second election. They still lost. And if you check the voting pattern, the results, they are very close. They still lost. So what is it? In fact, at some, some, the, the last campaign, the victory, we had a rally, victory rally, preceding the state election. We can said, let Jega himself come to River State and conduct the election. What do you mean? That's what happened. Beyond the wreck, resident electoral commissioner, three federal commissioners came to supervise the election. What else does Amechi want? I'm looking at the figures, though. Uh, you know, I've looked at the turnout on, on the average, you know, for many of the state elections. And your state seems to have an unusually high voter turnout. It's not exactly in consonance with the turnout recorded in many of the other states, even in states with high voter population like Lagos. The what reason, do you think explains that? The reason is that reverse people were and are still angry with Governor Mechi. So they visited, I said it, he's seen as an instrument that pulled down their son, the president. And the campaign, honestly, between the presidential election and the governorship election is that Amechi was a betrayer, had betrayed the cause of the people, so they visited that city. And for a man who is seen as a betrayer, you don't pay him with victory. So people came out and voted against him. Although the votes, the total votes adding the parties, the total vote was less than that of the presidential election, obviously. But people came out just to teach Amechi, Governor Amechi a lesson that no, what you did was wrong. Mm -hmm. so so people had, you, you're okay. saying categorically that over a million people Co yes. out yes. of the two point something million registered voters you have in River State. Over a million people, in spite of the fact that it's been listed as a hot spot, over a million people turned out to vote in River State. You know what, what you call hot spot? Honestly, it's uh, in the media. I've spent the last three months in Port Harcourt. I came in from Port Harcourt for this program. It's peaceful. I don't, we're understand the we're meaning, I don't understand the meaning of peacefulness uh, because when you say it's peaceful, uh, we have seen live. Feeds from Port Harcourt, especially what you the saw was during the campaign. And uh, during the campaign, during the campaign, yes, you saw during the, the campaign. Was not, Africa. The, Africa. Africa was Africa. The, 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 that when you say you instill fear in the minds of people, what people saw during the campaigns can also be replicated and can also deter people from coming out to vote. Where, where it was Africa. So, if we're talking about having an election, it's a different thing. But when we're talking about having a peaceful moment in River State. Is debatable because we were also there a couple of times we've been caught 
in the whole mayhem. So it would be very difficult for you to tell anyone who was in the mix to say what you saw wasn't real after all. Suleiman, Port Harcourt, River State is peaceful. I came in from Port Harcourt. I had a meeting with uh, one Mr. Andrew of the Canadian High Commission, still about this election. I had discussions. They come there, they do their businesses, people visit. Life is normal. So the impression that has been cre created is that Port Harcourt people are running. Where is Vonamechi now? Where is Dakuku? Where is the Wiki? Not there. Life is normal in River State. But please, just to still uh, answer her question, people voted. People came out. I said, Port Harcourt local government, the presidential election, I, I, within PDP, I presided over Port Harcourt. We gave Jonathan 260. We have, we have 415,000 voters. Jonathan got 260,000. In the governorship election, it came down to about 150. But if you check the pattern of voting, you know that people voted. Reverse people are angry with Governor Amechi. And this election, governorship election, is about Governor Amechi, not that people put aside. Hmm. Are you worried then if they hold the local government elections? Because if uh, people are still angry, when the vote, if the vote is going to go the same way, why should you be worried? First, why would the Governor Amechi hold the election at the twilight of his government at this point? Six days to departure. You run the state with caretaker committee for one year. Why do you want? And you are conducting an election for uh, people that will stay for three years. Why the hurry? But I can tell you, repeat, any election tomorrow will defeat APC River State. But why? You will see that it's not done with good intentions. I've, I've just read out the program. They are amending the, the law. So it, you will see that it's not done with good intentions. We'll challenge it. We'll challenge it in court. We'll challenge it legally. The, which, which, the local government election that intends to What about this particular election? Would you love to sub be subjected to any kind of forensic for the ballot? Of course. Why not? The we, 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 why not? Governor, the governor elect a few days ago called on APC and their candidates to join him to govern River State because now we finish the elections. It's about River State. It's no longer about a party. It's about River State. So, but if they insist on going to the tribunal, we'll meet them. But you know, the reason why we're bringing up Akirka because it was live on TV. Uh, we were there on that day. We also uh, got the wrong end of the ladder. And then there are many who are even saying, even the APC themselves, they say, as much as people saw, they were not able to campaign in Okrika. And then some other parts, they were also prevented from campaigning. And so they thought they were just being hard done by. Okrika was an unfortunate incident. It was an unfortunate incident. But I'll tell you, Okrika is the first lady's local government, where she comes from. Um, let us be very practical. In this country, it has never happened. The president has been pelted in local governments, in the states where he went to campaign. It's never happened. Nobody, people have not condemned it, or maybe a few. It's happened. So I'm not justifying it. I'm not happy that it happened. But you, I want you to reason with me to understand why it You've happened. You've just justified it. No, no, I want you to understand just, why just it happened. Moment, sir, we, we just, we you nearly know? lost a correspondent. It's unfortunate. No, and no, we should concern. We should concern. We nearly lost a correspondent. Yes, very sad. On, I, I think that that's what would have happened if he had died. It no, would no. have been very sad, you know, what? because uh, the thing is this, we can have peaceful elections. In what, if what we understand in Okrika happened, I mean, not just that it was the first, it was not the first time that they had attempted to, it wasn't the second time, and we understand that it had been an agreement uh, between parties. We understand that the commissioner, you can correct us if all of this is wrong, but there had been an agreement between the political parties and the Governor Michi, whom is, seems to be the culprit in all of this, wasn't even there. But why are and you talking about just a Okrika? Just a moment, yes. because we have that on live television. But I want to tell you Just a moment happened. also, yeah. because okay. our correspondent was nearly killed. We haven't taken anyone to account, you know, over that. The police have said they will do their work. We're still waiting for the outcome of that. And obviously, it was on live television, the kind of gunshots that we heard. If not that television cameras were there, perhaps it would have been denied as well, and that nothing of that sort ever took place, even if our correspondent was there and nearly lost his life because he was stabbed in the neck. 
So the question is, how can we say that all of this happened and because cameras were not there, nothing of that sort, or we, we discountenance every other thing that happened on elections day and say it, it was a skirmish? No, well, first, I repeat that the Okrika incident that affected your colleague is an unfortunate incident. But I want to tell you, our gubernatorial uh, campaign team went to HA. They were shot at. They were attacked. Our gubernatorial team went to uh, Abu Al local government. They were attacked. And on this day, on this elections day, all of no, it was not election moment, day. Just no, a moment. No, no, you follow the trend. I, I'm following the yes, trend. Yes. My trend is is if all of this happened during the campaigns, this was not even elections at all. It was just campaign. This is my program. This is not my program. And then on election day, we're saying it was peaceful. The place was nothing like state, that happened. The state How was well policed. The state was. I've told you that Amechi said two days to the governorship election that they were in charge of the security. The violence that happened in Okrika was happened, before. happened in front of policemen. How is it that this same police who finally well police the state couldn't well police the state on the day that we had campaigns in Okrika? Because of the, the alarm that was raised especially by APC and at Governor Mechi. The state was well policed. You just said that the AIG was sent. There were commissioner, additional commissioner of police were sent to the state. The state was well policed. Let me give you this uh, very quickly before we let you off. It's a question from our UK viewer, Victor. And he's been listening to you. He said, uh, you said that uh, Amechi wanted the election or wants the election to hold after Buhari uh, had been sworn in to give the APC an advantage. And his question is, uh, does it mean that President Jonathan also will make the PDP to have similar advantage? If, if President Jonathan gave an advantage, he would have given to himself. No, no, if, because, because it's no, I want you. To understand. No, no, it's you. No, no, they're taking it from you. You said Governor Mechi didn't want the elections to hold in reverse until the president-elect is sworn in to give the APC an advantage. And he's deducing from your own comment does that mean that's what the PDP has been doing all the time? So my answer is no. That if Jonathan did, he would have given that at same advantage to himself. And he would have won the election. That's the, my response to it. You know, there was also that uh, part where uh, the governor had gone to a certain polling area, uh, demanded for the result sheet. It wasn't evident. And many others just thought, well, if they didn't have some of their materials there, wasn't that reason for suspicion to say, look, something untoward may just be planned to go on? That happened on the presidential election day. But first, was it within Governor Mechi's power to go to a polling unit and ask for resource sheets? But I tell you, I've been in this business. The distribution process does not happen all at the same time. First, they give you some of the, like maybe the ballot papers, then subsequently the, um, the resource sheets because they are handled by different persons. So probably at the point, I'm not justifying it, I'm not from that unit, I'm not from that local government, but maybe at the point he went there, the resource sheets have not been given to that unit. But it's not within his powers to ask for resource sheets. But do you think, do you think it's normal for the resource sheet not to be present? I mean, and that's what I said. At the point he went, at the point of accreditation, maybe the resource sheet had not reached the report, the pooling unit. Maybe at that point, because it's a sensitive material. So they, they distribute the ballot papers, then subsequently they go around and drop the, ballot, uh, the resource sheets. But please, let us condemn some of these actions of uh, Governor Mitch and the impunity that is being presented. Is it within his powers to go and ask for resource sheets? Even IMF chairman has said elections held in River State. Please, trust your governance. Govern and go. Honorable is the former Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you. It's time for the headline news again with Imana Amawa, who is standing by to take it now.